was. You're trying to get me to say you're you're trying to get me into trouble. And <laughs> I'm Welcome to Full Court Fist, the show that takes you around the world of NBA fashion while also bringing you the latest, greatest, biggest, bestest news in sneaker culture today. I'm Big Waz. Let's go. We have a very, very, very special guest in the building. She's the first ever in the history of mankind female color commentary person for a team ever, y'all. Living legend <laughs> and my friend, Sarah Kustak. Give it up for Sarah Kustak, y'all. Yeah. My favorite part about that introduction was is that you called me your friend. That's uh, oh, that, wow. That's the line that's most important to me. But I do want to talk about the Nets and this season. They're first in the East, right? Which you wouldn't know from all the hand wringing about how things have sort of progressed. People are talking about the depth issues. Obviously, James Harden is publicly like sort of questioning his style of play. Like, I don't know when the pass is shoot anymore. Of course, there's the Kyrie Irving situation, which, you know, I know that's a euphemism for like 30 different things, but what's your sense about how the guys are actually feeling as far as Nash, Harden, KD, you know, the, the main players of the team about how things are going so far. I'll say this with with your introduction of all of that. This is a team that still feels like they have a long way to go, a lot to improve upon. They've had injuries, missing some parts, still figuring some things out. And they're sitting first in the East and they're still winning games that they should win. And I think they like each other. Like it's a group that is a lot of veterans, some of the young guys. I mean, even, you know, Cam Thomas and what he's kind of started to do in the last couple of games, getting some more time. Um, DeAndre Bembry has been a guy that I think has opened up a lot of eyes, but I think just everyone has the same type of mentality. I've enjoyed it because of how much they actually seem to care about one another and enjoy playing with one another. What's the feeling that you get, because you are around these guys, about Kyrie's absence? I know it sounds like the thing that I should and Don't would be, be a saying. Don't be a company woman, Sarah. Games. Come on. I'm tell <laughs> but, but sometimes you just got to call it like it is. And the feel is... That's their brother. He's going to do what's best for him. They support that. They respect that. And they got to focus on what they have to get done to accomplish their ultimate goal. And the goal has not changed for that. It's the same as someone being injured. It's the same as someone, you know, just not, not, it's not being able really to play. really the same as an injury, Sarah. You're right. You're, it's not the same. Yeah, I will say, but, but just in the mindset of, okay, who's available to play? This is who we're running with. You're, you're correct. It's, it's not the same. But I just think the mindset of like, this is who we got and we got to figure out how to be our best with this group. And I don't think it's a distraction on a daily basis because I think this is just the the mindset, the focus, and, and what it is, and it's it's how it's going to be until until something changes. But until it doesn't, I don't think it's something that's constantly thought about every day. So Sarah, we do a segment on this show. We call it a copper drop. I look at an NBA guy's outfit and I say to myself, would I cop this or do I drop this? Since we have you here today and you have some of the most eccentric players in the league on your team, the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> Tell me what you're seeing here, Miss Sarah. I like it. He's almost you got like a, he's it. almost got, well, look at it. He's almost wearing what I'm wearing. A t-shirt, <laughs> uh, a little, a little denim jacket. He I got like the, the Travis Jordans. Scott friends and family um, fours. I looked it up on StockX before you came out here. They're selling those for $40,000. Yeah, you got a spare I, I, 40 I, in, the, in, the, in those couch cushions? I'm the done, prayer I'm stick done. is working for you. The cargo pants are working for you. Was you're trying to get me to say, you're, you're trying to get me into trouble. And I'm, <laughs> I think I would rock that. My man, I could I could do, toss that on. Yeah. You put Kevin Durant in there next. Kevin Durant, tell me how you feeling about this one. Oh, yeah. Cut <laughs> this. <laughs> you copping this too, huh? Yes. In the high socks, I, I am always down for a black hoodie. It's very simple. Um, oh, definitely. Definitely. He loves himself a rolled up beanie. Nothing more than a beanie. It's cold in Brooklyn, especially right now. I'm with that though. I'm either, I either got a beanie or a hat. So I'm down with this. We got one more for you because because this is clearly the Homer edition of Copper Drop. We got one well, more for you. <laughs> you, you. Waz, you should have sent me three of some of your, some of your fits. 
Oh, some of my uh, own personal fits? Oh, no, nah, I wouldn't oh, do that to myself. Oh, this is... James I Harden. I like this. I, you, I you, have you like this? Okay. I'm going to have... I'm going to have... Sarah, I'm going to have to cop it. This is very cozy and wintry. It's uh, in the spirit of the holidays. Is that a lamb? What is that? I, that a might paca? be a camel. A paca. Well, there you have I it, my ladies glasses. and gentlemen. I need my glasses. I need a, a magnifier. But I'm down with that. I think it's really, I think it's a good look. Sarah Kustak <laughs> of the Brooklyn Nets broadcast team <laughs> thinks that the Brooklyn Nets is the most dapper team in the NBA. <laughs> I didn't realize how many jobs you've had. Like, if this thing is to be believed, <laughs> Sarah Kustak has paid her motherfucking dues out here. This shit ain't overnight. ESPN, Fox Sports, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox, WMAQ, the Connecticut Sun, versus in your past life, you might have been a Haitian immigrant. My goodness, with all them damn jobs. You know, and I said that you're my friend, so people are gonna say I'm biased. I think you're easily one of the top three, top two color commentary people in the game. I think the Nets broadcast is the best we have in the league. You hear Sari, you hear Iron Eagle, you hear these people do what they do. You're the best at what you do. Well, first of all, thank you. Like you said it, our our crew as a whole, and it's whether it's Iron, Ryan, Grady, Rich, the list goes on. I think our truck is the best in the business. We care so much about the product that we put out and we're so passionate about it. I know I feel so thankful, so grateful, so lucky each and every time I get to call these games, not only to do what I do um, and to be able to do what you love, but to do it with people that you love. How long did you know you want to do this? Because a lot of these jobs like kind of look glamorous on the outside, but I know for a fact the nitty gritty that goes into doing all the shit that you used to do, it is a lot of like grinding. Like how long did you know you wanted to get into this? I didn't really know I wanted to do it until I was in it and doing it. While I was in grad school and, you know, figuring out kind of what I was going to do, what my next steps were going to be, I had an opportunity to call some um, some high school games, some high school basketball games, state championship games, do a little football, um, some women's basketball games. And then I had a, I was you, you, production runner in the truck, ESPN, college football. It was Big Ten games, so I was able to get, get to the places um, fairly easily while still in grad school. The first time I sat in a production truck, it was up at Wisconsin, it was like a Wisconsin, Michigan football game. That live aspect of like, you can, you can fail or you can succeed. You could have an amazing game. You could have a crummy game. You, you know, it, it's, it's the same concept. And to me, that was the same adrenaline rush that I got and I saw when a production and a live production took place. So from that moment, that's when I realized I wanted to figure out, okay, how can I make this an actual reality? It, it was a grind. It was as we all have our stories, doing crazy things, waking up at 3 a.m. to do one job to the next job, sacrificing a lot, um, a lot, a lot. Uh, ask friends and family how many things I've missed. That's how Sarah Kustak got to break all these damn glass ceilings and be recognized as one of the best in the business. I cannot think Thank you enough for coming on today. Again, a pioneer. You're the greatest, Sarah. Well, as you are. Thank you. Made my day. This week, we lost the icon in the world of design, fashion, sneakers, you name it. Virgil Abloh passed away from a rare form of cancer this week. His family released a statement saying that he was, you know, privately battling the ailment for two years now. Uh, he succumbed to it this week. So what What can we say about Virgil Abloh? Uh, he got hired by Kanye West back in 2007 and never looked back. He designed the Watch the Throne cover. He got George Kondo to do the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy cover. He designed the Yeezus cover, founded Ben Trill with Matt Williams of Aleek and Heron Preston. Of course... Off-White, he found it back in 2013, completely changed the game. And then, of course, what he's probably going to be known best for was the collaborations with Nike. And that first 
10 sneakers where he was doing stuff like Nike Blazers, of course, Jordan 1s, but also stuff like Hyper Dunks, right? Basketball sneakers, uh, just a groundbreaking collab that to this day is just making ripples. Then in 2018, he broke all kinds of barriers by becoming the art director at Louis Vuitton, the first black man to ever do so. His legacy sort of speaks for itself. I think for me, what I'm gonna remember about Virgil is just his assistance upon just not going for a convention in every single turn and trying to innovate. That first 10 sneaker collab that he did with Nike, a hyper dunk was in there. That's not a glamour shoe. That's not a shoe that no matter what Nike or Jordan does is going to sell like say a Jordan 4 or a Jordan 3 or a Jordan 11. This is a shoe that nobody would otherwise care about and Virgil put his imprint on it and it goes. It just freaking flies. Same thing you saw with some of the more recent stuff with Jordan 5s where the tastemakers were like, oh, it's a bulky, ugly shoe. Virgil puts his imprint on it. That shoe flies. Same thing with the Jordan 2s. I just like the idea that Virgil would take whatever hype or clout was associated with his brand and his sort of aura and lend it to things that people weren't thinking about to shed light on things that he thought was cool. I just like that idea that he would push people to see see the, the beauty and the light in things that not everybody's pining for. I think that will forever be his legacy, just just making stuff that everybody didn't think was the best or the coolest or the brightest or, you know, the most avant-garde and making it something worth having, making it something that people could be proud of possessing. Rest in peace, Virgil Abloh. You know, I hope his family's doing well. Uh, just an incredible loss for the community.